video here. I just wanted to um, kind of quickly go over this video by Brian Lilly, who was talking about the Liberals thinking of buying houses or hotels to house asylum seekers. So let's have a look at this video and then we'll uh, have a quick talk about it after, like usual. The overflow of asylum seekers is a sign of a truly broken system. Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist for the Toronto Sun. It didn't used to be this way. We weren't so overrun by people coming to the country and claiming asylum at our land, air, and seaports that we were having to look at <clears throat> buying hotels. Not rooms, but full hotels. That's what Mark Miller, the immigration minister, says the government is considering. They've been overrun with refugee and asylum claimants across the country, but particularly Ontario and Quebec, since Justin Trudeau put out his infamous, infamous tweet telling uh, people worried about being deported from the United States, you've got a home here. Well, at first, that brought in a bunch of people across Roxham Road who were afraid. There are literally people here in Canada who don't have homes. So what is he talking about? Oh, don't worry, guys. Just come on in. Open border policy. Come on in. It doesn't matter how many of you come in. It doesn't matter if we're only building 200,000 houses a year. See, again, this is not like a racial issue. This is a math problem. 200,000 houses, a million people a year. This is not rocket science. ...of being deported from the United States. Then it became a place where people from around the world would fly into JFK, take a bus or cab up to the Canada-U.S. border and walk across and declare asylum. Now, that got shut down a couple of years ago, but not before, what, 100, 200,000 people were brought through Roxham Road? Now the numbers are even higher. Roxham Road may be closed, but the word is still out. Come to Canada, claim asylum, and skip the immigration line. The immigration process can take years, but the asylum claim process? Well, you're here as quick as you can get on a plane. And it turns out that many of the countries that are providing people coming and claiming asylum, at least half of them are rejected. Countries like Mexico or India, it's rejected as much as they are accepted. In some other examples, people have been rejected more from certain countries than they've ever been accepted. There's a lot of fake refugees gumming up the system. But rather than deal with that, the Trudeau government looks for new ways to encourage more people to come, give them more services, give them better housing, give them uh, better accommodations. None of this. And you know what? I'm all for helping people. But here's the thing. You already have so many people here who Trudeau cannot help, largely because of his own failings. Okay, if everything was great here and he you know, was actually a good prime minister and got down our, got rid of our national debt and wasn't you know, sending all this money to other countries and not overspending on all these stupid, like the Arrive Scam app, like how many millions of dollars that cost when it should have cost a couple hundred grand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's totally mismanaged immigration, our debt, his, our finances, basically, which is, it comes from our tax money, right? That's where the money that they get, or the money that they spend comes from our tax money, right? So they're really reckless with our money. And they haven't helped us really gain any traction, and especially when you look at you know the middle class is being slowly wiped out. And you're going to bring in more people. That just it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, fine, help people, but you got to help yourself first. You have to make sure that the ship you're running isn't leaking. And right now it's leaking. Right? Like, we have to patch up the holes. We got to get people in houses who are here right now. We have to create more good paying jobs, not crappy little coffee shop jobs that pay minimum wage. Right? Like, you're not really bringing people into a thriving situation anyway. It may be better than where, where they're coming from. But that being said, you're just creating more of a problem. Close the border temporarily. Fix this crap up. Make sure that everyone here has a home first, and then you can start bringing in people. As long as you're building and keeping up with that demand and creating jobs to keep up with that demand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have to have all that in place first. And they're not doing that. They just want to flood in as many people into Canada as possible and not give us enough resources. And now they're going to buy up hotels for people seeking asylum. They don't have the money for that. They're broke. They're, what, $5 trillion in debt. They don't have the money, but they don't want to work on that, do they? They just want to continue to destroy Canada. And in my opinion, that's been their agenda all along. This makes sense. 
We used to have between four and 10,000 people in the pre-Trudeau days, four to 10,000 people a year showing up at our ports, claiming asylum. Last year, it was 71,000. In 2022, it was 63,000. And so far, just from January 1st to the end of May, it's more than 30,000 people. And the numbers aren't stopping anytime soon. We should be imposing visa restrictions and requirements for people from certain countries. We should be stopping those who are going to come here and falsely claim asylum before they even get on a plane. We used to be able to do that. But Trudeau is a true open border aficionado. And he's going to keep running the system like this until we run him out of office. And this may end up being one of the reasons that voters turn against him. Let me know what you think. Well, I mean, voters are voters are already turning against him in rapid paces. So, I mean, it's this is just another thing to not like the guy. And yet again, there's still about 20, 25 percent of Canadians who still like Trudeau and are still going to try to vote him back in office because maybe they're uh, they want to destroy the country, too. Or maybe they're just so dumb and naive they don't really see what they're voting for. But either way, this is this is not Trudeau being stupid and not being able to do math. This is, he knows what he's doing, and he's doing it anyway, which is evil. He knows he's hurting Canadians. He is supposed to be our employee, not the other way around, and he's destroying this goddamn place. 70% of Canadians, by the way, think Canada's broken. Yeah, 70%. And he's the one breaking it. So we got to get his ass out of here as soon as possible. Hopefully, hopefully he resigns sometime this summer. I'm not confident that he will. But these, you know, these ridiculous policies, the taxes, the horrible mismanagement of immigration. I mean, this he, he can't manage anything. Kevin O'Leary said it best. This guy couldn't manage a 7-Eleven. And it's true. The guy's just an absolute doorknob. He's an absolute doorknob when it comes to math. But when it comes to creating these policies that he knows hurts Canadians, and he's going to do it anyway, the Safe Supply Act, another one, he's doing it on purpose. Now he wants to bring that to Toronto, too. This guy's not stupid. Maybe he's not the best at math because it seems like most liberals aren't. So maybe he might be stupid in that area, but he's certainly not stupid in every area. And if you're doing this kind of shit and you're not stupid, it means you're evil. Because there's no way he's that incompetent of a person. He knows what he's doing. There's a clear agenda to try to, to, try to destroy the middle class. And that's exactly what's happening. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself this question. If they were trying to destroy the middle class, what would they be doing differently? Let me know in the comments section what you think. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. Thanks so much again for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with another.